Hello friends. Today we are going to talk about hyperfocus in autistic children. Hyperfocus is the complete absorption in an activity to the extent that everything else in the environment is either ignored or tuned out. This is because the extent of flexibility is low. How will you observe this in autistic children? You will find them having a repetitive play. They would want to play the same thing over and over. The steps of the play might be repetitive. They also might be using repetitive phrases or speech patterns and adjusting to changes in routine might be challenging. We need to understand why does this hyperfocus happen in neurodiverse children or adults or even some neurotypical individuals because they tend to enjoy the activity to a very high degree compared to the others. This provides them a sense of control and predictability over the activity, hence the repetitive nature, a fixed routine, repetitive phrases that they like to utter, which is also a form of their learning. The play steps are repetitive because they are more predictable for them. And the final step, they find it challenging to turn it off or stop the activity. Should this hyperfocus be called as good or unhealthy? Let me put it this way. If this hyperfocus is to such an extent that it interferes with the daily routine, any family plans, the sleep of the child, the socialization of the child, even following their basic hygiene, like taking a bath, eating, brushing their teeth, hyperfocus is not necessarily related to an area of interest or a sensory need of the child. Sometimes it's just about the task at hand. They started it and now they find it unable to stop. Also, this hyperfocus could be related to a thought process which could be positive or negative. In case of positive, you might find that the child is just laughing continuously which appears like random laughter. And if it's a negative thought, then the child feels scared all the time because that event got stuck in their head and they cannot take that thought out. So they want to control everything around them so that they can calm their anxiety. Now talking about where we should intervene when there is hyperfocus in a neurodiverse individual. Don't try to stop it if it is not affecting the daily life of the individual because sometimes it's really important for self-regulation or emotional regulation. Help them to create a balance between their daily life skills and the activity of their interest because this will not hurt their self-esteem and they will be more likely to participate in the activities a therapist or a parent introduces. Teaching by examples is an excellent way to explain. For example, you tell the child that they are going to lose interest in the activity if they don't stop right now and they can try to pursue it the next day. Instead, you can provide them with timers and you beforehand tell the child when the timer goes off, we are going to stop this activity and move on to the next one. How to approach such a child who is hyper-focused on an activity? Try to talk to them only when you think they have their focus on you. They are not too engrossed in the activity. For example, you can ask them for the object they are holding in their hand. Once they have given it to you, their attention is on you. So they will acknowledge you better when you try to tell them after five minutes or there is a timer ticking when it goes off, we are going to stop this activity because it is the meal time. If verbally you are able to distract your child, that is good. But if not, light touch usually helps for the child to focus on you, acknowledge you better rather than forcing their hand to leave the activity that is more likely to cause dysregulation. And then you can give them a transition time saying, see the five minute timer is going to go off. After that, we will leave this activity here and go for our meal time or for taking a bath so that the child is able to process the information. They know that the timer is ticking so they need to hear the bell maybe and they either might leave that over there or they can carry maybe one toy with them to the meal time and so on. It is important to create a balance. 
in this activity of interest or hyper focus activity of the child and the other activities that you want to introduce which could be related to daily life skills play skills academic skills and so on so try to create a good balance over there so that the child does not feel overwhelmed for which you can follow these activity tips so that you alternate their activity of interest so for example, they want to pursue their activity maybe with blocks or toy cars or toy animals. You give them good 20 minutes with that before you introduce the activity of your choice. And because they got some satisfaction with it, they are more likely to participate. And the final note, having shared interest with the child is a great way in building social bond and relationship, whether it's a parent, a therapist or a peer working with the child. So try to work on sharing the activity with the child, following the lead of the child sometimes, and then making changes in the activity so that the child also tries to copy you just like the way you did before. Let me know if this information on hyperfocus was helpful for you by liking the video, subscribing to the channel for more information related to child development, ring the bell icon for notifications when my videos are out, and we'll meet again soon. Bye.